Welcome back to our FM22 adventure, Beg, Borrow, Steal, where we're trying to go from the fourth tier of Spanish football to the very top without spending any money on transfers. It's the last day of the season. We've brought you back for a glorious game because it means absolutely nothing. A win and we can't move up the table a defeat and we can't move down the table. And most importantly, we can't get relegated. However, we have got much to talk about in today's episode, which we're going to call Who Should Stay and Who Should Go. So let's start off with the form since the last episode. A little bit up and down, I don't mind admitting. You saw us beating Girona 2-1 in a pretty decent display in the last episode. Well, after that, we had three more concerning performances. We stuck with our 4-4-2, but we lost to Racing, who are now doomed to relegation. Not a good side, and they beat us 1-0. We then lost 3-0 in our next game, and 2-1... The Real via the lid in the game after that. So we've tweaked again. We asked you after the last video what you thought our ethos, our formation, our tactics should be moving forward. We absorbed a lot of that. There was a lot of very different ideas down in the comments section. So we came up with something just a little bit experimental to break away from the 4-4-2. And in the next two games, well, it worked. An absolute treat. We'll show you that tactic in a moment, but we beat Mallorca 4-0 in our first game using this tactic. Now remember, Mallorca knocked us out the cup earlier in the season, and in the league, they beat us 5-0 in the reverse fixture. So to put four goals past them, granted, one of those goals came in stoppage time, but we looked pretty decent in this game, and we backed it up with a 2-0 victory in our next fixture as well. We did lose to Malaga 2-1. One of their goals was a penalty, and Malaga are a pretty good side. So we're going to stick with this formation for today's game. It is highly experimental. I don't think we've necessarily got the players that can make it work at the moment, and we won't necessarily line up with it for next year. I just wanted to see whether we could try something that might be a little bit more potent going forward. Let's show you what we came up with. So in previous versions of Football Manager, I've been quite partial to a three central striker system. We've developed one here. I'm not for one second claiming that this is the holy grail to take us forward. Just something I was experimenting with to be a little bit more potent in attack. It gives us very attacking wide fullbacks, a halfback dropping in to make a third central defender at times, freeing up the fullbacks to bomb forward. We've got Lander as a Mazala floating around and trying to be creative and three central strikers up front. We might rethink this over the summer, but it's certainly given us a couple of good results in our last three games. But on to our game of who should stay and who should go, because we've got some questions for you down in the comments as we cycle through our squad. Which of these players do you think have got another year left in them? Nelson, 34 years old now, a solid citizen. But do we need to upgrade? Ferroni came in as a replacement for Guti. He's got an average rating of below 6.8. Do we need an upgrade? The Humanes League has been with us since the fourth tier. He's been a loyal servant. Has he got any more game time left in him? Even young Jake O'Brien has developed well over the last couple of seasons, but he's been with us since the fourth tier as well. Another player. But we could look to try an upgrade on. Rasanas has been a decent player for us. I wouldn't say spectacular. Certainly lots of people have questioned his height at the far post being to blame for some of the goals we've conceded. Do we kick off next season with a new goalkeeper and an entirely new back four? Do players like Simone Muratori warrant another season at the club? Or is their time running out even, dare I say it, young Mickey might not be so fine anymore in his two seasons at the club. He's had one incredibly good one and one quite average one, maybe. He's more naturally suited to a division below. My goodness, we're going through them all now. Is Lander's race run? He's still got fabulous set piece taking ability. Otherwise, there's not much physically to his game. It's not like his other technicals are even outstanding. He's been a wonderful player for us. Two years ago, he was averaging an eight and getting 21 assists. He's not far off an average rating of seven for this season. Is he a backup player? Is he still a first choice player? Is he no kind of player at all? 
Let us know down in the comments, Guelphie, I think. Well, he's been a Marmite signing. Some weeks I've loved him, some weeks I've hated him. Eight goals, eight assists. Seems like pretty decent return. He's got an average rating of lower than a seven. He throws in plenty of performances. In the low sixes, Kevin Carlos came in and had a barnstorming year last season. Far less prolific this season. Even our mate Rossi, well, his stats look pretty good. 20 goals in 40 games, an average rating above a seven. He's been pretty horrid in some games this season. He's not quite as quick as I normally like my strikers to be. Not even like he's a great finisher. Are any of these players in our starting 11 next season or do we need a full upgrade? Let us know down in the comments who should stay, who should go. We're going to go and warm up the boys. We'll see you out there for the kickoff for the final day of the season. As we're into our first highlight pretty early on in this game and we've tucked away a goal. I think the keeper has spilt it. Rossi has pounced. That's his 21st of the season. Maybe that helps us decide whether he stays or goes. I'd be a fool to get rid of Rossi, wouldn't I? The only reason I was considering it is because, unlike lots of our players, he might actually have some kind of resale value. The other thing you could let us know down in the comments, by the way, is have you had any kind of joy with three central strikers in your tactics? Is that something that you've made work? I've used it in the past with a back five rather than a back four. Have you ever got a three central striker tactic to work? Maybe we might try and create us a three striker tactic for next season as we go 2-0 up 15 minutes into the, the last game of the season. You never know, by the way. 2-0 up after 15 minutes. Maybe this is the three striker central tactic that we'll be going with. I made it as a bit of a stopgap, something a bit more experimental. It's done really well in two of the three games that we've played, and it's put us 2-0 up against a team that's comfortably in mid-table early on in this game. In fact, they've not even registered a shot yet. We've had seven, four on target. We're even going to throw out a shout to tell the boys that they're playing pretty well. Elche have responded with a couple of shots of their own, but half-time is upon us. We've got one more highlight before we go. Can we steal the ball and counter? I don't think we can. Instead, the game is back in the balance. Bocage has volleyed them back into the game. And now that half-time team talk becomes incredibly significant. It's another set-piece goal conceded. They've worked that one pretty well. We've got to do better at set-pieces next season, by the way. Again, we are being out-jumped at the far post. We're being out-maneuvered on indirect free kicks. And what started as a great half is now looking a little bit trickier. Let's see if we can rally the troops for the final half of this season. Okay, we went with the complacency halftime team talk. Doesn't seem to be as effective as in previous versions of FM. In fact, our keeper was demotivated by us telling him not to get too complacent. We've raced our way into 62-3-4. 65 minutes, no highlights. I'm fine with that. Let's see if we can make some subs to freshen things up. Okay, changes are made. Mickey and Bruno Guelfi were both having really poor games. We've subbed them both off. I'm pretty sure this is a final appearance for Smitterella. We've got all the way to 80 minutes. We've not had a single highlight in this game. I'm going to be honest, not entirely disappointed with that. We're going to make one final change. Tired legs all over the pitch. Been a long, hard season. Maybe we've been asking too much of these boys in terms of the pressing. We're going to bring Jordi on. Maybe his last game as well. And we're also going to make one little tweak in that we're just going to lower the tempo and throw on a tiny bit of time wasting on the 80-minute mark. As soon as we hit 87, we might go full time wasting. I'd like to finish the season on a win. We didn't quite get to 87. We've got five seconds to go. And we're in the highlights. Are they going to equalize and deprive us of that last day of the season victory? We've headed it clear. It's not gone far. It's back in the box. It's a great chance. It's the same player. We're looking for the ref to bail us out here. Is there going to be a flag? Or are we going to have gifted another winning position away? Taking a long time to make up his mind. We've got to get ready to make changes. If it's disallowed, it is disallowed. 
We're going to go for the shouts. We're going to ask them to focus. They'll hate that. We're also going to throw on full time wasting. We're not going to pass into space anymore. And we're going to see whether we can nurse this through to the end of the game. We've got ourselves, what, two minutes left, two and a half minutes left. Bit of stoppage time as well. This was miles offside, wasn't it? Wasn't it? I don't know. We might have just got away with one there. Now we hit the 90 minute mark. We're cruising. We're going. We're going. We're at full time. They parade around. We have got that win on the final day of the season. The XG looked pretty decent in the end. I think we were worthy of that victory. Let's send the boys with some praise ringing in their ears. And there is another season done. I am guess we're going to brand that as a success, aren't we? We managed to avoid relegation. We've kept them in the second tier. Finances are going to be coming. We can now scout the entire of Europe, which we've been doing over this season. So hopefully the quality of our recruits on free transfers is going to improve. You let us know down in the comments which players you think we should be trying to hang on to and which you think we can do without for the future. We're going to go away and have a very busy transfer window, reshape the squad when you come back next episode for another Beg, Borrow, Steal.